Uh, so you are welcome to this uh, lecture. So here we are going to continue with um, some trade applications, trigonometric applications of the Morgan theorem. Okay. We've already seen how you apply it, how you apply this theorem. Now, the first application we want to look at is this. Um, how do you express uh, things like cosine of n theta, say cosine of 4 theta or uh, 6 theta, sine theta and tan n theta? How do you express them in terms of just cos theta, sine theta and tan theta? How do you do that? You can actually apply the Morgan's theorem to, to do those uh, calculations. So what you do is that, of course, we know the statement of uh, the Morris theorem is given by less cosine of theta plus i sin theta raised to the power n is equal to this. You just multiply the uh, argument by, by n. So this is a statement of the theorem. We know that now. So we are going to use just uh, you know this example to illustrate how how you, how you apply it. Okay. So this is use the Morris theorem to prove. That goes for theta is equal to 8, cos to the power 4 theta minus 8, cos squared theta plus 1. Alright, so we want to apply this to, um, to prove, to prove um, the statement of the Morris theorem. Good. So let's see how, um, how, we, uh, how we do that. Now, we have, a, we have 4 theta here. So, I mean, if you want to apply this, so of course we need to let our n be 4, right? So that if I have cosine of 4 theta plus i sine of 4 theta, I'm going backward, I can rewrite this as cosine of theta plus i sine theta raised to the power 4. See? This is what we want. And we have it on the left hand side here. So this is that what you do is that expand this using binomial expansions. You are going to have uh, real and imaginary parts. You separate them, and then you can use the equality of complex numbers to equate the real and the real on the, on the left and right, and then the imaginary to the imaginary, and then you can find this side. I mean, you can find what cosine of 4 theta s. So we're going to expand this. Okay. So expanding this. We're going to have, remember Pascal split uh, triangle, right? You have x plus y raised to the power 4 x one. So this will be raised to the power 4, this will be cosine 4 theta, the next will have a coefficient of 4, right? And then have cosine to the power 3 theta, and this guy will be, uh, will be multiplied sine of theta, multiplied by this. And then I'm going to have, the next will have uh, a coefficient of 6. And I have cos squared theta. This will, be, this will be squared now. I have sine theta squared. Okay. Then I'm going to have another coefficient of 4, right? And I have cosine of theta. This will be cubed now. Sine theta raised to the power 3. Finally, I'm going to have the coefficient is just 1 now. But I have i sine of theta raised to the power 4. Okay. So if I expand the right hand side, this is what I get. Okay? So we're going to see simplify this. Let's simplify this. Let's see, um, see, see what we get. Um, don't forget about that. This is what we want to show. Um, okay. So anyway, so you can uh, you can write it somewhere here. Uh, cosine for theta is 8 cos to the power 4 of theta minus 8 cos squared theta plus 1. So leave this here because you want to do this. Okay, good. So let's, uh, let's simplify uh, our expression. So this implies that cosine of 4 theta plus i sine 4 theta is equal to this is good, goes to the power 4 of theta. I'm going to have i, uh, let me do this, i, I have 4, goes to the power 3, and then sine, right? Know that i squared there will be negative. So I'm going to have minus 6, goes to square, theta, sine square, theta. 
i to the power 3 would be negative i, alright? And we have minus i for cos of theta sine to the power 3 theta plus i to the power 4 is i squared times i squared. I squared is negative, negative times negative, that will cost me. So positive one, so I'm going to have here sine raised to the power of four of theta. Okay? So now we can group the uh, times without the i's, the real parts, and then the imaginary parts. When we do that, we're going to have cosine to the power of four of theta, that is this guy. The next is this guy, which is minus six, cos squared theta, sine squared theta, alright? And then I have this guy, which is also real, sine to the power of four of theta. Then I'm going to have the imaginary part. The first one is this guy. That is four goes to the power three theta sine theta. And I have minus four cosine of theta sine raised to the power three theta. Okay. So I question this in terms of real imaginary. On the left hand side, you have real imaginary. Two complex numbers are equal if your real parts are equal and the imaginary parts are equal. So, this implies that cosine of 4 theta is going to be equal to the real part here. Okay? So, this implies cosine of 4 theta will be equal to this first term, cosine to the power 4 theta, 6 cos squared theta sine squared theta, sine raised to the power of 4 theta, alright? Okay, so, so let's, uh, let's continue to simplify that. Let's see. Now, note that the expression we want to prove has cosine, cosine, there is no sine term. So we need to, we need to use our trig identities to, um, to rewrite this one in terms of cos, right? And this as well. We know that cos squared plus sine squared is equal to 1, right? So we know sine squared is equal to uh, 1 minus cos squared theta. So that's fine. And sine to the 4 will be sine squared squared. So sine to the 4 for theta will be the square of this, right? It will be 1 minus cos squared theta squared. Okay, we can actually expand this. This is 1 minus 2 cos by theta. This will be plus cos to the power of 4 theta, right? Expand this. So you can plug this guy and just back into here. Then you have everything in terms of cos, right? Cosine. So cos, cosine of uh, cos uh, 4 theta would be equal to this guy. It's okay. I have cos to the power of 4 theta. I'm going to have minus, uh, minus, let's do it this way, 6 cos squared theta. This guy is 1 minus cos squared, right? Then I have plus. This I have expanded, which is here. That is uh, equal 1 minus 2 cos squared theta plus cos squared of theta. Okay? Uh, let's expand this in group terms. I have cos to the power of 4 of theta. This and this gives me 6. Cos squared theta. This and this. Oh, hold on. There's a minus here, so you have to be careful. This is minus. So this is a minus. Okay? And then a minus and minus should be plus here. So I have 6. Cos raised to the power of 4, right? You see that? This is squared and squared. So I have a power of 4 here. Plus 1. Minus 2 cos squared theta plus cos to the power of theta. Okay? Now I can group all the terms with uh, the terms raised to the power of 4. I have one of each here, right? Plus this one, that, that is 7 of them. Plus this guy, that's 8, right? So this is equal to 8 cos to the power of 4 of theta. Then I have the squared terms, which is negative 6 cos squared theta, I have negative 2 cos squared theta, so this and this gives me negative 8 cos squared theta, so minus 8 cos squared theta, and I'm left with just the 1 plus 1. Okay? And that is equal to this. 
that we wanted to prove. Okay, so that is how you can use the Moore's theorem to um, to prove you know some some uh, to prove some trig uh, trigonometric identities. All right, good. Now suppose that we are asked to find sine four theta. You do the same, thing, right? Let's integrate sine four theta to the imaginary part here, and then do all the uh, gymnastics, right? Mathematical gymnastics, and then you are. About that. Good. So um, I'll check how I'm doing with time and then I'll move on to uh, a second application. Alright? A second application of um, of the Marvel's the Marvel's theorem. I'll just start with it and then uh, I'll move on to um, to another um, one. 